Hello, I'm Pastor Fugit of the Claysmill Baptist Church here in Lexington, Kentucky. It was one year ago that I stood in the pulpit nearly speechless as we had witnessed the worst tragedy that had ever taken place here in the bluegrass state of Kentucky. As the tornadoes came through the western part of the state, we began to hear story after story after story of houses, entire neighborhoods, churches, businesses that were destroyed. More than that, lives were lost. We were at a loss of words of what to do, but the calls began to come from pastors and Christians from all over the state saying, Preacher, what can we do to help our friends in western Kentucky? Immediately a truck was filled with supplies and goods, just as it was from churches and people all over our state, and we started making our way to western Kentucky, taking the food and supplies, Christmas gifts, to do what we could do to be a help and a blessing to our friends in a time of tragedy. One of the most amazing things is the faith of God's people in western Kentucky that has been one of the greatest testimonies I've ever seen of our faith in God. So often, our nation and our people are misrepresented by the media of today. You're about to see a documentary that tells the real life stories of individuals, families, churches, and businesses that saw the hand of God in tragedy and heartbreak. They will tell their story, and I trust from their story of seeing God's hand and even death that your faith in Christ will be increased. As we enter this Christmas season, we know that it was God's gift to mankind. God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him could have everlasting life. Perhaps you've never come to the place of faith and trust in Christ in your life. Even this documentary could help you to understand how important it is for us to have faith in Christ. I want you to watch this documentary that was filmed by our video team in western Kentucky and put together over the past year. You'll be blessed, you'll be stirred, and your faith in Christ will be increased. This is the storm that we're going to be talking about for decades. You know, it is a catastrophic tornado. Zero doubt that this was a life-changing tornado. Mayfield guys were directly in the path of this thing. I cannot, cannot tell you with any greater urgency, you've got to get to your safe place now. Tornado come through Mayfield, downtown. This was a high-end EF4. That was on the ground for 165.7 miles throughout western and central Kentucky. An extremely long track tornado. Which is almost at the top of the scale. There were a couple of times that I just, I kind of just forgot about being on TV and I just was, as a person, I just said, guys, we need, we've got to pray for Mayfield. This is going to be bad. the absolute worst thing that could ever happen to a community. We don't know what to do. Our, our town's destroyed. I don't know if we can build it back or not. And just disintegrated our neighborhood, especially on Molar Lane. There's nothing left. Less than two years ago, our house caught on fire. Our house was completely burned up and then we rebuilt on the same exact foundation. Got a brand new house built and not a month later this hits. The next stop was Princeton and I noticed the Kentucky Mesnet station went dead. It went offline and that was my first indication at that time that our facility out at Princeton took a hit. The UK Grain and Forge Center of excellence 
it took a direct hit from that tornado. The roof was gone, uh, walls collapsed. We had a brand new pickup truck there and I just remember looking at it and it looks like it was crumbled up like a piece of garbage. All told, there was 66 tornadoes confirmed across eight states. 20 of those tornadoes touched down in the bluegrass state. There was over 70 lives lost during this event, over 600 injuries, and there's damage estimates anywhere from 3.1 to $5.3 billion. This was one of the worst natural disasters in Kentucky history. There was also four EF3 tornadoes in South Central Kentucky, one going through the city of Bowling Green. It did significant damage to the city there. Here in Bowling Green, I have never seen anything personally as destructive as what we witnessed. There have been extreme suffering, extreme sorrow, folks that have lost everything. In this neighborhood was a family uh, that every single member in that home uh, was lost. We pray that in this tragedy, God would give all of us the strength to find what it is that he has for us to learn, even from a difficult situation. I, I came out here and I just bawled and I thought, Lord, you have a reason. I'm not going to question why. I don't ever want to say why. You know what? Honestly, that's a fair question. Count the costs and it looks bad. It's fair for non-believers to, to ask that question. So I called them and I couldn't get nobody for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I just figured they were all dead. This is where my wife and kids was the night of the tornado uh, because I had went over to open up the, the church. By the grace of God, I just decided right there that if they're dead, I'm praising him, and if they're alive, I'm praising him. And I, I can't say it any other way than by his grace, he saved us that night because we were gonna die. They was actually in this room uh, up against the walls for, as far as they could go. The only thing I want to remind is, please don't let it hurt to them. I don't want them to die in pain. Please let it end quickly. You could hear the roof being torn off the house. The walls began to shake and the ceiling starts to move and I knew this was it. It was just so loud, but so quiet at the same time. Like everything felt so surreal. And then it just stopped. And then it felt like it was all over you. And I went upstairs to see if it would be safe to go in the house. And when I opened the basement door, which was hard to open, all you could see was Sky. And I ran back downstairs. And she gasped and she ran back downstairs. And me and my brother and my mom, with our hands trembling, we held each other's hands and we bowed down. And we just started praising the Lord. And we just praised God. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Well, we've lost every, every structure. We've lost the parsonage, fellowship hall, and uh, then the church building's a total loss too. This tornado was devastating and I think as more people talk about it and just the awesomeness of, of God's hand um, in saving so many people. 329, can you get down here? We need help, we got someone under this uh, debris. In the bathtub. We're looking for a 15 month old. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, oh my God. Oh my God. Two children who were put in a bathtub, and the bathtub was way far away. Both of them are okay. Oh, praise God, Lord Jesus. I love you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look here. Here's the little one. Um, lives are being changed right now. Uh, Send some prayers for folks uh, that are dealing with this right now. As soon as I took my microphone off that night, um, you know, I, I knew people had died. Mm -hmm. 
all four boys were in the bath bathtub. Jess laid over them and I laid over her. As it got closer, something flew and I heard wood snap and I heard a window break. It had picked me up off of her and I'd hit the ceiling of the bathroom and I'd gone unconscious at that time. And then it picked up the house and I felt like I was upside down and then I blacked out. So it is headed over toward Macedonia Church Road. That's the road that I live on. I got in the vehicle to get away. I watched it go right before it got to our neighborhood. I watched it hit our neighborhood. I could see the debris. I mean, thousands and thousands of feet in the air. And I wasn't gone probably four minutes, four to six minutes total from leaving to getting back. And when I got back, it was unbelievable. Our neighbor, he has four kids, he and his wife, and my light shined on where his house was and his house was completely gone. I didn't even go to my house. I just stopped my Jeep right there in the middle of the road and I jumped out and went over there and tried to see if I could find them. From what I gathered from the people that had talked to Daniel as and that come to me later, was that when Daniel came to, he said he seen me standing at a tree. And he stood there against a small tree. But when he got there, I wasn't at that tree, but I was really nearby and he, he, he seen us. And the way that we landed, we landed in a T, so my feet were at her right thigh. I solemnly believe that God used an angel and, and of the Lord to, to, to lead him to that spot, but clothed him in a way similar to me so that Daniel felt at ease and comfortable in knowing I can go to that, that's safe. And, and through that, he was able to find us. Our neighbor Rodney gets to us. I saw his son, Daniel, um, I think he's nine or 10, he was, Back in the debris, um, I, he was all cut up and dirty. I don't even think he had any shoes on or anything. He was, his arm, I think, was broken. He was, um, it was just bad. And I asked him where his family was at, and he said that his dad was way back on further. They said we were about a football field away from where our house stood in the woods behind our house. You see how messed up this is and how thick it is? It was, I don't see how the, how the boys even walked through there to get out, you know what I mean, to get to me. That right over there is my neighbor's floor, Charles. Um, and he was, I found them just right in this rubble, probably 50, 75 yards that way. Rodney was able to, he grabbed the boys and scooped them up and got him in his vehicle right away. He asked, could I find his boys? And I said, they're all safe and they're in my Jeep. It was uh, Daniel, Thomas, Stephen, and John. Jesse, who was at the time 28 weeks pregnant with Anna and myself. I asked him, I said, where's your wife? And he said, she's right there. I didn't even see her, but she was right at his feet. Um, she was not in very good shape. She was unconscious. Um, I don't really want to talk about her, how, you know. 5.30 a.m. Um, on December the 18th, Vanderbilt called and said that Anna's heart was giving out. And by 6 a.m. she was gone. So the, the week of Christmas, the, the, the Tuesday and Thursday, the week of Christmas, I buried, I buried my daughter and then I buried my dad. And then they had done all they could for Jess on February 7th, around 3 a.m. she passed away. You know, I was so angry, especially after Jess passed. I was so mad. We lost almost a dozen people. There's a lot of people in Bremen that are not okay right now. Some of them are angry at God. Uh, I was asked the same question by the New York Times. 
And I said, I thought to myself, man, okay, you know. Their question specifically was, you know, I know you're a person of faith, but when you look at the devastation, the destruction, and the death that's come out of this storm, do you, do you still believe that yours is a good God? Short answer is yes, he is, he is still good. The long answer is tornadoes are awful, uh, and so is terrorism, and so are car crashes, and so is heart disease and cancer. And scripture tells us that it's appointed once for all men to die. Otherwise, nobody's gonna live forever. Not in, these, not in this earth. We have to walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, we also have to realize this world isn't our home. This is a, a land broken with sin, uh, cursed with the fall, and these things are gonna occur, uh, but they're also designed of him to bring us to a spiritual place he wants us to be. God put me in a recliner for a few, mo for, for a few months and revealed to me what his capabilities were and how little and insignificant I was to what he had going on. And God said, I'm here. I'm always here. I've always been here. So God's grace is, is bountiful. You know, where, where my sin ends, grace abounds more. When you read the gospel, God gave everything. The Bible says he gave his only begotten son. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. There's nothing that could ever be taken away from me that would weigh more than what Christ did for me and what God allowed him to do for me in the in the the blessing of the cross. I personally don't look at the loss and question why did you do this? I look at the loss and question what do you want want me to learn or do or minister in through it? That no matter what God's will is, he's still holy. And I can't explain why my life was saved and another's wasn't. All I can go forward is saying, how can I use it to bless other people? One person asked me if this has made my, how I felt about God, if this has made my faith stronger or if I've been blaming God. God has been awesome through this. I have seen the Christians come together like never before. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's the Lord taking what could have been divisive and what could have split communities apart and bringing the folks together instead, in, in spite of the tragedy. We all came together. There was no red state, blue state, none of that. We were people, we were human beings, we needed help, and we helped each other out. Met a lady who asked us if we needed something to eat. I asked her, are you with an organization or a church? She instead pointed and said, no, that's my home. It's destroyed, but I'm out here doing what I can to help those that are rebuilding their lives. Over and over, stories like that. Directly behind me is what is left of the Amidovich family, uh, folks that uh, attend our church, and, but their home and all of their possessions other than what they wore that day, uh, those are gone and no longer there. Their father is still in critical condition in ICU Nashville. We, need, we do need stuff, but God sees everything and when, like, when you help other people, we're not the only ones that need it and other people also lost their homes, lost their families, so you also need to give back. And they've offered to help in ways to be a blessing to others to be able to give back and to take meals to those in need. It feels good to help other people because you know someone needs it and when you give it to someone, you feel good about yourself. And as a church, we're seeking to minister to these families, those that we already knew prior to the storm and those that we're now meeting. They helped us with food, toiletries, some dog food for our dogs, uh, some clothes, and we was looking for a hot meal because we ain't had a lot of that. We've set up our gymnasium and as almost a warehouse with different items, they can come and either come to the church and pick up what they need, whether that would be clothing, uh, toiletries, uh, soap, shampoo, um, uh, different food items, different water, drinks, and those type of things. 
people are handing out $100 gift certificates for their clothes, for their food. Uh, there's so many food trucks that have come to uh, Mayfield that uh, it's been unreal. Uh, the, the sense of unity and the togetherness that have come as a result of this tragedy have been, over, uh, have been overwhelming. It's, it's seeing the body of Christ, I guess in a way, that I knew it was there, but I never experienced it until now. I'm just overflowed with the goodness of people coming to help. New York, Wisconsin, Georgia, down in Florida, West Virginia, North Carolina, these states have come and have contacted us or sent shipments or supplies that we're taking and distributing. Literally around the world. I mean, we even had a group of people in uh, believers in Africa, very poor believers, uh, send an offering uh, to, to Western Kentucky. I've seen the love that I've never seen. It brings people together. I've never seen so much love and so much outpouring from Christians. Honestly, I can't even imagine to not have a place to live and not have, honestly, presents or a Christmas tree to celebrate Christmas. So we are wrapping gifts to take to Western Kentucky to the kids who lost their houses and the, all of their Christmas presents in the tornado. Um, I just hope that they'll smile and know that someone does care for them and that somebody put this together loving them and that someone does care for them. We appreciate it 100%. We're so thankful and grateful. I mean, it, it means everything. And you know, whenever you don't have nothing for somebody to offer to lend a hand, it's awesome. And truly, it makes you proud to be from a state like ours that would come together to help their fellow man it also makes you thankful to be a Christian where folks from even other states would contact to help in whatever the way they can to be a blessing to those in need. And I feel like we were able to, you know, use that national spotlight that was on our area to show the rest of the country, this is what the love of Jesus looks like. Uh, well, the morning after the storm, I came back to the house. That piano caught my eye and I thought, I wonder what kind of shape it's in, one. And then two, regardless as to what kind of condition it's in, I'd like to be able to play it one more time. And so I sat down and played a song that had been in my head for days at that point. Uh, it was the Bill and Gloria Gaither song, there's something about that name. My sister came down the hall and recorded it, captured it. I didn't know she was. It was supposed to be a private moment that didn't stay that way. Take a listen to this touching moment captured by his sister. But in the midst of tragedy, we also find stories of hope. And I'm not a spotlight person. I don't uh, enjoy uh, recognition or a stage or applause. It's never moved the needle for Jordan. <laughs> I've spoken to people, heard from people from every continent as a result of the video. And so, yes, I believe the video has really given me a platform, although it may be temporary, a platform you know, to share the, the important things in life. And all the appearances that I've made on the Opry or on, on in media outlets, my goal has been to um, proclaim my faith in Christ, and to point attention to my little community. In Muhlenberg County, it's uh, really struggling, it's really hurting. And so if I could do those two things, um, then it's been worth the attention. The Lord works all things for the good of those that love Him and are called according to His purpose. Only by the grace of God to say that I'm not done with you. Honestly, it just felt like a wake-up call from the Lord to say that I had taken granted for my life saying I can do whatever I want with it. And I think He was like, no, I can do what I want with you. You can die at any moment. 
because you're in my hands. It was almost like he was saying, hey, I love you. I've got more for you. I'm here for you. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this to bless other people. And ever since then, I've been sharing more with my friends and I've been living for Christ more dedicatedly than I had been before. There was just a few blocks of the foundation left. It picked the entire house up. And so I had to start from the ground up all over again, but I had to do it differently. And I viewed it as this, God wiped the slate clean. Everything that Charles had built in this life under my, what I thought was me, he wiped away. And we went back to the foundation, the foundation being God, the cornerstone being Jesus Christ. And then from there, building on things because it changes perspectives. Nobody wants the storm in, but once it's there, you can be thankful for it after it's gone because of what it does in your lives. I'm more relatable now than I've ever been, and I want people to, that are hurting to understand there's another way. And I would say Brother TJ is experiencing that same situation. He didn't want a tornado to blow his church apart, but now that it has, on the backside of it, man, only great things will come. We're in a position now that we can actually rebuild the ministry back in a, a better, stronger, more biblical way and with an eye to caring for those around us like we've never had before. I guess we're excited to have our own place again soon, you know, to, to, to hopefully reach more people. We're building a, a pole barn style building for phase one. But when the storm came, it destroyed the building. The Lord opened up a door here, so we were able to purchase this parcel of land just, just barely outside the city limits. But I will praise God, we've not missed a single Sunday since the storm. Our folks have stayed together. And our town and community was hit so hard for the storm that to find a place to even have church has been very, very difficult. And we were able to, to uh, rent the movie theater. We rent that on Sunday mornings, and that's been, uh, that's been for the most of the time, that's been where we've been meeting. Oh, we have been looking for places to worship, and on Sundays, we worship in the elementary school. This is the closest place to where Bethlehem was, and we felt like this is a better location for us to do ministry uh, in Bremen, so. I'm like anyone else, I get discouraged, uh, and uh, you know, I was really at the crossroads, Lord, is this, you know, is, what, what do we do? It would have been very easy to say, Lord, this has been a good mission, this has been a good run. But I mean, that, the ministry was to reach lost people. And I can say through Christian love, God made it very, very clear to me that the first week in the aftermath of the storm to just stay on focus, to stay on point, to just stay, to keep pastoring, to keep pastoring this group of people, to keep uh, counseling, to keep the program going that we had. You know, when we lost a building, we, we, the church stayed together, the people stayed together. We broke bread together, we, we met at odd places off and on. I think I understand the connection to the building. However, for, for me and those who were in there that night, we knew that night it was done. The building is just a building. It can crumble and it can fall, but it'll never take away the people that are in it who want to glorify God. And I think it's a testimony, the church is the people. God's grown us numerically and God's grown us spiritually, I, I believe. It's been a long process, but I think God has, has strengthened His church through this, this time of need. just live in a broken world. Bad things happen, tornadoes happen. It's, it's just kind of part of the reality that we're in right now. Um, and sometimes it's hard, to, it's hard to take. We're reminded 
of how ugly this world can be, but we're, through that, we see the grace of God. We see the love of God. But I, I think for me, the thing that I always go back to is this world is broken, but it's not going to be forever. Um, there is coming a day that Jesus is going to come back and all is going to be made right. These troubles that we're going through right now, tornadoes, pandemic, whatever it is, they're awful, but they're temporary. And it's, it's changed me in how I want to go forward in serving the Lord. I don't want to squander that because I know that He has more for me and my family to do. I'm excited. I'm really excited that the Lord has given us a new chapter in ministry. I think there was ever a time, whether you've been affected by the storm or not, whether you've got a healthy church with a nice building and it's paid for and there's no problems, or you're, you're here in the center of, of Mayfield where we're, we're trying to rebuild from a mess, I think the ministry, the kingdom works still the same. I don't think we need to be complacent with it. I think we really need to be aggressive in trying to reach people. I just want to be a finger pointer. I just want to be able to point him to the man that, that, that changed my life, to, to, to who Jesus is, what he's about, why he loves us and I would be doing Jess and Anna and others a disservice if I kept this to myself. I put it this way, I knew his goodness before, I know it a lot deeper now. Yeah, I'll put it that way. After rehab and many more visits, Muharram Amitovich did come to church. Well, not only did he come to church, not only did he hear about the love of Jesus, but this man, who before the tornado had been resistant to the love of Jesus Christ, came forward after a Sunday morning service and placed his trust in Jesus Christ. We've been looking for a church, and I think we just found our church. That's him taking the bad and making it into good, and that's what a good God does. I trust this documentary has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. I trust it has stirred your heart as well as it has mine. And I would ask you to share this documentary on your social media page so that others can see the story of the hand of God in the time of tragedy and heartbreak. If you need to trust Christ as Savior, you ought to make that decision right now and say, Dear Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I accept you as my personal Savior right here and right now. If we could be of help to you here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church, we would love to hear from you. God bless you, and have a good night.